Nick Wazowski here, two time world medalist in wrestling. You're watching Garage Strength TV. Like, share, and subscribe. And turn the notifications on. Okay, so this is, this is the Garage Strength Podcast, and this is in preparation for this year's Super Bowl where the Patriots are going to shit all over the Rams. And uh, <laughs> so initially I thought we were going to be talking about the actual game, but now I'm informed that we're going to be discussing uh, youth football all the way up to collegiate ranks. And so we got Neil George here and Neil's son, Brandon, just committed to the University of Pittsburgh where he's going to be continuing to play football. He's a two-time All-State uh, linebacker. We got Shama here, whose son is a linebacker alongside Brandon at Burks Catholic. And then we got Tim Singleton, whose son Nicholas is just an absolute stud, R rushed for over a thousand yards as a as a freshman in high school. So you guys are sort of entrenched in the uh, the youth football, you know, high school football environment, I guess, or community in the in the area of, of Berks County. Uh, I feel right. Like, I feel like you guys have the the pulse whenever I need any any uh, any dirt on anyone <laughs> I know I well, I know I could definitely go to Neil well, I would oh, call yeah. it dirt <laughs> <laughs> so I I guess where I want to start is that maybe we can we can work up because I wanted to start off and tell you guys that I think playing youth football is stupid oh <laughs> <laughs> and I but let me let me let me let me let me back up my statement before you rip into me I think that up until like middle school, and I want to use Brandon as an example. I think they should be playing flag football, learning the sport, learning, <laughs> <laughs> learning the the technical aspects. And the reason why is one to start with the CTE data or information that we're getting back from even the, the high school level that that research is showing as far as um, scarring of the brain and and stuff like that. Two, I just feel like someone like Brandon, who or or even Nicholas, who I feel like these two were well developed for their age group. And I think about my own son Lincoln. Like, let's say Lincoln gets to be, you know, he's in fifth grade and he's five ten. He could right. kill somebody. Like that's where I sort of, you know, I sort yeah. of see that with Brandon. And so my whole argument regarding that is that someone like Brandon could p completely turn a kid off from the sport. Just because he fuck them up, and, him, yeah. yeah, and I think that that's where it's like, what are they learning in that regard? Are they learning how to take a hit, or are they learning the actual sport before they mature enough, you know, to, to take a hit? So I think that, and I, I partially know what Tim's uh, response is going to be, just because uh, I've had this discussion like a year ago with him, and I and I, I can use myself as an example as I was all state defensive end, and I never even played football until eighth grade, so right. that. And I, anyway, that's my that's my pitch, and I want to see your guys' response. Go ahead, Neil. I look at it at a different angle. I, they, you know, in a way, Dane's kind of correct. What, what ruins the sport more than, I'd say, the CTE and all that, the guys that are coaching these right. young kids. I said, there's, you know, if you, people forget the reason they're coaching youth football. It's to teach them the game. It's not to run the score up, to beat guys, to beat your chest and say, I want a championship. I mean, these kids at eight years old, you know, everybody's a blank. It's like, like an artist with a blank piece of paper. Yeah. You know, you create what you put on that paper by teaching them fundamentals, you know, how to work with other kids, giving them a good attitude. And we lose a lot of that. And then you do t take a coach that has not the best intentions and you give him a kid like Brandon or Nicholas, he's going to just murder kids with him and think it's funny. There comes right. a point where your goal is to get everybody caught up, like almost like a like a shark's mouth. Every tooth in there is just as sharp as the one that falls out. So you want the next one up to be just like that. So you're going to teach these kids. You know, your goal should be not to win a bunch of games. If you have a kid at the beginning of the season couldn't get in a proper three point stance, couldn't make a form tackle, and at the end of the season all your kids can get in good stances and make form tackles, that's something to move on. And when you get to where it matters, now you got something. Right. That's how I look at that whole thing. I think flag, sometimes to an extent, it teaches. I'd rather have not play anything than play flag. Really? 
bad fl- habit. Flag, you, they, you, you go up to, you fit up to grab a flag, you run into them, they yell at you. A year later, they're telling you to run through a kid. So for two years, you're, you're taught to run up, stop, break down, snatch his flag. Right. Well, you do that, and you then know, you're gonna get smashed. You're gonna get run over. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's and, where... and, and to okay to be fair to myself, I really don't know much about flag football other than, dude. I only ever played like two flag football games in my entire life, like in gym. Was play. it fun? I, I liked it, but, but I was, <laughs> was fast and big, yeah. so yeah. I was just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we used to kill people. Yeah, <laughs> that was flag had no flag was like tackle. <laughs> With just don't take just don't ground. actually <laughs> tackle them on purpose. Right. Yeah, or don't get caught. No, he's right about it. it's the parents. Because usually if you have a kid that's that good, especially if you're coaching him, it's your kid, he's the one that's probably getting screwed because you're going to pull him out. Common sense. Why? He doesn't need four touchdowns. Yeah. doesn't really matter. Like, and then the further you get away from it, you realize how little youth football is, how s- small it is. And what he's saying is really important. Developing kids, nobody remembers how many touchdowns. Player X had right. four touchdowns. Don't matter unless you're playing wide miss. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. But the views here are not all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I offend any wide missing, they don't come people, here anyway. We, if yeah, I offend any wide missing people, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you need. No, therapy. you realize how small this stuff is. It's not that deep, and it is. You should be developing, and, and but he's right. It's the parents that are. Thinking or Belichick. Yeah. And really, you know, most people don't even know who won a youth football game, right. who won a championship. Most people don't know who won the county championship. You can think about the small percentage of people. Right. So if you try to keep that perspective, you'll be better off. It's actually funny. When, when Neil was describing, you know, just getting a kid into the stance or, like, teaching him how to break down. So, you know, I'm – a diehard New England fan, and and this was mainly because when I was growing up, they were, they were terrible, they were trash. So I was like the contrarian kid uh-huh. who who I liked Drew Bledsoe when they drafted him. I had every Drew Bledsoe rookie card. Then they got good later, and it was sort of like, oh, now you know, everybody's now, yeah. Every, yeah. yeah. But so I also have to admit, I, I've read Bel, uh, Belichick's book, like Education of a Coach, and and one thing that made me think about that right away was actually that that's the whole thing he t- he talks about is that. Every person's got to be the best. How do you get a How do you get a guy in the NFL to get into his three point stance the best way he can get right. into a three point stance? Right. How do you get the center to snap the ball the best way he can to the right. to the quarterback yeah. whose hands might differentiate? Right. And it's like every little thing, and that's where it comes back to, you know. And I guess that's my hesitation, even even as you know, my kids are starting to get older now, and Lincoln is interested in it because he goes to the BC games right. and he stands on the sideline, and he right. sees what's going on. And he embraces that. I think where where I struggle is like, okay, you you guys coach Lincoln, I I can I can trust you. Some other guy gets you know yeah some dude from I would wherever, tell dad wherever yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll sit there and be like oh Lincoln you know he's fast he's explosive he's bullheaded like well yeah. let's give them the, the ball thirty five yeah, times right. and it's like well, yeah. what is he gonna learn from that I tell parents too coach especially if they, you have some knowledge. To, not about your kid, but just to slow other people down. Like, yo, dude, it ain't worth it. Or, it's like a check and balance. Yeah, yeah. that's why you're there. And Unless they don't you have a bad parent. You get too many bad parents. Bad parents, yes. Staff, but you do need somebody that's going to slow it down and realize, you know. What were you going to say, Sean? No, I was going to say exactly what he was saying. Is that I kind of agree with Dane once Dane said it the way he said it. Is that it would work that way. Not so much flag. But it would work if you had developmental coaches that could coach in the whole idea is that we're developing these kids. You know, the worst You're thing that I hit. No, no, it wouldn't work oh, flag okay. wise. Okay. I don't think. Okay. But it would work if it was developmental and more so spent on developing the kid and, and learning how to do things rather than, you know, what I was going to say is one of the worst things I've seen or heard as a coach and you know I've coached from knee highs all the way to semi pro now and the worst thing I've ever heard is oh uh my son's getting ready to break the midget rushing record oh Jesus and I'm like <laughs> what are you talking about because no one cares yeah right no one cares who thing. this year's 
leading midget rusher was. Right, right. No one in the world cares. And that's the issue you have if you try to do it the way you're saying is that you won't have enough developmental people at that level because all of us here have been through a situation where you have a coach who's coaching solely to get his kid to be the quarterback or the running back or the wide receiver. Right. Where, you know, I can't speak for Tim as much as I can speak for Neil because Neil and I have been coaching together for several years now is that one thing about our two kids is because they are so much more developed and knowledgeable about the game, if anything, they suffer when we're coaching them in reps because we're not repping them so much in developmental as we are, like he said, trying to get that kid to be able to get in that three-point stance or to be able to come up and form tackle where we're really like, okay, our kids got it, and we're not worried about being the midget league champions, you know, But we want these next couple kids, the following year when they're on the field with our kids, to be to productive be like and, and yeah, part and of support. the team. Yeah. So I, your idea has a lot of validity to it, and it would work if you had developmental coaching at that level. Right. That, 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 yeah. And that's actually – so the way I met Neil was through John Mish. And one thing Mish told me, like the first day he, I ever really even talked to the guy – he was like, dude, and he had warned me. He's like, I, I coach my kid, but but my kid played center. He played tight end. He played left tackle. He played linebacker. He played safety. He played wide receiver. He played running back. He played guard. And he was like, I want my kid from a from a, a you know pee wee whatever you want to call it perspective to learn the game and le- to learn every single position. Right. And, and, and I thought, yeah, and my, my, I guess my issue is like, dude, I, I grew up in, in the wrestling environment and I was so, we were so exposed to my dad wrestled at East Stroudsburg. So he is, has a decent right, background. Right. Um, I was so exposed to guys that were just the absolute most horrific wrestling coaches that you could ever imagine. And they're the same type of guys that you're yeah. going to get in play. Yeah. Whereas, so my dad was basically like, all right, we're not wrestling anymore for the club. Because these guys don't even understand like right. how to get a collar tie or, yeah. or whatever. They, like they're not teaching fundamentals. They're teaching you how to just be a bully, basically, and that's not going to get you far. And I think that that's ultimately, you know, the first time I that I had a good conversation with Neil at, at the barn. This is going back like six years. Right. Was, you know, yeah, we were talking about Brandon smashing kids, right, right, right. you know, enjoyably. But at the same yeah. time, he's talking about, you know, what what matters is that in six years from now, and we didn't know what was going to end up happening. Brandon's here right now so that not for for next year, not for two years from yeah. now, but so six years from now he right. signs with a big school right. and and I don't have to worry about, you know, he doesn't Anything. have to worry about paying. Right. And worst case scenario, Brandon learns how to have a work ethic and how to right. deal with stressful situations. And that's where I think that one thing and that's why I would value what you guys are saying because I don't think people see have foresight. I don't think you got to look ahead. I don't you think a lot of these guys yeah, have any foresight the, whatever. Because again, we're, well, we're we just don't. talking about this. I think, society does it. Well, well, yeah, and that's we where it goes back to. We're, we were just talking about this, you know, before that we started yeah. the podcast. You want to screw over a 16, 17 year old kid for what? For so that the adults can feel better about right. themselves, yeah. but that that stunts the growth of a 16 yeah. to 17 year old kid yeah. who could complete be in a completely different life situation. Right. But it's both sides. It's the parent of the 16-year-old kid. And yeah. It's a school district. Because somebody's not thinking or somebody's not having a conversation with somebody about what their concerns are. Yeah, yeah. And it all goes but, back to proper communication, which right. ultimately... But see, that's, again, going back why I would value you guys. is Because as much as I make fun of you for talking so much, you're all good communicators. Like, Neil will tell me right away, like, yo, X, Y, Z... Right. You know, is happening. This is what's going on, and he'll, or he'll communicate. You know, Pitt's coach sees this in Brandon. Can you work on on this? Right. And I think that's where you guys are are good communicators. Whereas some of these other guys, I, dude, that's where I, I just struggle because I see you know where the school district I live in. Not that my kid goes there, but where we live, it's like I don't want those youth football guys teaching my kid. Can you this? This may be off the subject, but you kind of brought it up. How do you feel about? What is a good reason to, to leave a school? To is leave it, a school? To leave a school. Is it because you 
I'm good. I'm tired of being five and five. I want to go. Or is it should you should that kid stay? Or you understand what I'm saying? Like what? Well, what's I, a good I can reason? give you a good reason. What I mean, I remember. <laughs> I think Brandon left in fourth grade, and and yep. Stacy told me because some dude, some kid was dropping the end bomb on them all the right. time, and they were basically like, "Dude, screw this, we're done." I think and that's that, a good reason. Right. That was a, a combination of different things. Like you can see where your environment is going. Like I, I the place where I came from, I helped run the youth football program. We go to a banquet one year, and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Or anything like that. But you see kids, the parents come into a banquet. And they have jeans. They're dressed like I am today, right? <laughs> so I made a suggestion. And the kids are at this banquet. The kids are running around playing football. Now, I've been to banquets growing up. I played at Northwest AA. I played with John Mish. You know, guys I went to school with, you know, Mark Rothrock. You know, uh, Todd Yeager, Rodney Williams, the Gilmores, all that. Their dad's coached. Them kids moved on. Their dad still coached what they taught us. We played with kids that some kids got free lunch. Some kids' parents, you know, were, were rich. Some kids had single parents. Some kids had both. You know, all, you know, areas of the spectrum. At that banquet, every kid there looked like a million bucks. He had a, a, a dress shirt, right. some slacks, and some shoes. You didn't see kids playing football and carrying on. So I made a suggestion, hey, at the banquet, why don't we put in like a, just a little bit of a dress code because when kids are dressed a little better, they act a little better. Yeah, that's actually yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. They looked at me like I was talking to far. Nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So the whole culture. That's, I was just going to say. I said, you know, I can't be here. I, I, the, can't, I said, you know what I said to him? I said, let me ask you a question. When you watch the Heisman Trophy, does the guy that gets the trophy go up there with his football jersey and a pair of sweatpants? Or is he wearing, or is he wearing a, a suit? We, I think everybody agrees with that. Yeah. I guess the question I'm asking is, should a kid leave? Strictly because I'm five and five, and you are. I can and I can answer that's this what very, I'm asking very very well. Okay, be, because one I think it's entirely the environment, and I've been yep. right. you know for a year. I was at helping this school for for their lifting right right right, and for four years now or three at, going at, on four school. with with BC, and the culture is completely different. Every single kid comes up, shakes my hand. Every single kid says thanks, thank you. Every single kid will will like chest bump me and everything like that, and and I will lose my mind. I will call them names. I'll throw shit. And, and both of your kids have been the brunt of me. Yep. And they'll stare at me and just take it, take it, take it. And then they'll be like, you know, the next day we'll talk it out and and we're good. The other school, I I got you know almost Phone calls yeah. From uh, the AD. You said you said yeah. my kid wasn't pushing himself, and it's like, dude. Like I don't want to be. I don't want my kid growing up in that entitled, babied environment. I want my kid dealing with stress. I want someone who cares about his future. I want somebody who's who's going to sit there and, and develop him. And the thing that both these two kids that we we're talking about beforehand said to me is like, dude, you go into the weight room. There'd be seven kids in the weight room. They'd be screwing around playing with bouncy balls. No one was lifting weights. And and I know it's athletic. I would say that even though that's just the athletic side. That's also going to be the academic side, side of where right. they're not they're not. And, and that's pushed. why I bring it up because I, I think that people think it is just because this school wins, this school win. doesn't. And, and I don't think people take into account maybe it is the environment. And I think me and you have talked about it that everybody needs to look at their own house. Yeah. And why are you kids leaving or why if I come to you and say hey. Um, I want to throw in the gym or, or there's some reason that, you know, in the other coach and the coach is saying, no, you can't right. go do X, Y, and Z. Well, then that's not an environment that kid wants to. I think flourish it goes back in. to too, like, why, why are they leaving? You've got to sit there. And right. Say, I'm always saying, why are you leaving? There's, somebody not, else there's something, something going on. It, like you guys have something that they want. And that place has some doesn't have that. So it's like, as a coach over here, you should be like, all right, how can we get that? Because I want to improve. That's what I. And if that yeah. progressive attitude is not there, then I don't, I don't want right. my kid there. And I think that's ultimately the thing is that, as far as sports are, are concerned, is that sports are just a representation of, of that community. Yeah. So yeah. you you get a community that that is constantly you know around and and pushing each other academically hmm. and pushing each other physically and pushing each other socially to embrace each other and, and, and not 
not be negative about everything and blame everybody else for their problems. That's what I want my kid to be. I don't want my kid over here where he's going to be around people making excuses because ultimately right. it comes back to why are your guys, why are your kids good? Your kids are good because right. they've been training and they've been focused on long term development since you know, right? With Neil, six years. Yeah, yeah. I, I think when it comes to my opinion about why kids want to leave or parents want to take their kids out of certain situations or like you said environments is is i think around here because i can't speak about texas or georgia i I can speak around here some places have this this belief that oh this is us this is us well that's not real life yeah so yeah you can have the booster this the fan this and uh I followed for the last 20, but that's not life. Like, your kids need to understand and be able to work and coexist with other people. And what I see around here, and when I say here, I mean the county, is that when we went to school, you know, when we played, we went out to Exeter. We went out to Muhlenberg. We went out to Governor Mifflin. Like, I knew... The guy that played for that team. We were friends. We were cool. We hung out outside of there. Where here, I think more so, you know, thank God for Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Because some of these kids would never know each other. Yeah. If it wasn't for that. But on the other end of that, those places that believe that this is our little, they're usually the ones that have the most derogatory and yeah. the most negative statements and the most bullying statements on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. yeah because yeah. this is our little community and how can No, you no, can't no. disrupt it or, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not real life. Yeah. Your kid is going to have to deal with someone who doesn't come from where you are, look like you look or talk the way you talk at some point in their life. And if they're not able to do that, who I mean, so I would say that's a good reason to leave. <laughs> Oh no! I'm just. just and, and, and I, 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 I just say and, and again, let me well, say, like, but I do think, I, <laughs> and I think that's eighty. Per, that's probably eighty percent of the kids. Envi- there are there is a certain sense of percentage of kids that are just like, dude, I'm tired of losing. I want to go. I got a question for you though. Both of you, Ollie. Okay, so here's my question. This is gonna get a little politically pointed. I found that. People who are, tend to be a little bit more conservative, they'll talk about these vouchers and having being able to, to send your kid to whatever school you want to send them to. <laughs> They're the oh, same yeah. ones. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for this one. That are crying the blues when a kid does go to Berks Catholic. Right. And, and, and the, the parents are paying for them to go there. They're the same people that are complaining like, oh, my God, like. You're sending your kid over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna judge you now. It's like, well, what happened to that argument that you were just making like two weeks ago? <laughs> That's fun. Go ahead, Neil. I'll let you go. A year or two ago, we were at this uh, Hall of Fame Academy in, at the Hall of Fame in, in uh, Canton, Ohio. Yeah. And there's people from California, Las Vegas, Michigan. New York, Florida, all over the place. And it's a like a four day camp, and it's all kind of, you know. High end kids are going to go to college. It's a, it's a really good camp. We're standing next to this guy from California. We started talking about transfers. He said, In California, everybody was bitching and complaining because, you know, Mater D, Don Bosco, Long Beach Poly, they were the powerhouse schools. And they said, It ain't fair. It ain't fair. We have the best facilities. We Our school district is loaded with money. We should be able to get kids to come to our school too. You should be able to transfer for athletic reasons. So after enough bitching, the school, the, the state said, fine. If you want to transfer for an athletic purpose, you can. So these people that were bitching in the, in the nicer neighborhoods, they thought they were going to get this influx of athletes. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Long Beach Poly, Mater D, Don Bosco, their enrollment went through the roof. You know why? I would rather be around. The environment. Yeah, it's not. It's not the winners. facilities. I don't care what the field looks like. Right. right. When we were kids, we played on fields with broken bottles right. and glass, and dog yeah. shit, you name it. <laughs> we played ball. You know, and we didn't. It prepared. What these people don't realize is, your environment is preparing you for life. Yeah. Years ago, I used to love watching uh, Grand Prix racing, and 
Nigel Mansell. Remember him? Yeah, yeah. He was from England. Uh, raised for Rothmans, whatever. I know nothing about Dominate, that sport. I, look, I know a little bit about the environment. Is he talking Nigel Man- he's listen winning, right? well, look, no, Nigel talking. Mansell okay. dominated F1. <laughs> him, Nelson PK. The difference is, in F1, these kids start racing, probably like IndyCar, but at four years old, they're racing carts, and they progress pr- progress through. They said a Formula One car, there's only a handful of people in the world that can navigate them around the track successfully. So Nigel Mansell does everything he can do in Formula One. He comes to IndyCar. Gets rookie of the year, kicks everybody's ass. All right? Michael Andretti, he's the big IndyCar guy. Shit. Nigel Mansell can come here and do this. I'm going to go to F1. 15 races about. It took him to finish one race. Yeah. yeah. Lasted a year. You know, Nigel Mansell retired. He's one of the greatest IndyCar drivers ever. The environment that you're if you're coddled and you're given an easy path and your competition, you're only going to be as good as your competition. You know, I don't want my kid to start on some bullshit team. Mm-hmm. I want him to be able to start on a team that's loaded with dogs. You know, when I came so, to first Catholic. So, that being said, let, look, me, let me ask you a question real quick. Because I, I, that, let me put so, in a shameless plug here quick. That's why I think you guys do tend to bring your kids here is because they come to the garage. Yes, they're around other athletes. And everybody so yes, who's yes, in yes, here yes, is just working, savages. Yes, they're yeah. all yep, wanting to be working. champions in some way, shape, or form. And if it doesn't happen on the field, it's going to happen in, in life because they're because they're and, and with, I think grind. with yeah. coming, you know, I'll jump on that plug. <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know, I hear people, and this is off tra- topic, but I, I'm tired of this shit, is that I hear people go, Oh, you go to garage. Oh, you're gonna get your kid hurt out there. And I'm like, obviously, you have no idea. Right. Once again, you're speaking about something that you have no knowledge about. Yeah. No knowledge. You know, I can sit down and read a couple of books about how you're supposed to lift. That doesn't make me a better instructor than Dane. But what I will say here is. When you come here, you have a kid who's in sixth grade, and you have a senior lifter. Yeah, like Michael being around Brandon. Yeah, yeah. like you don't understand that. I don't think it's the the savages that push my son. It's more so the younger kids that are here that yeah, are like- busting their ass. My son is like. There's no way I'm letting that little dude yeah, like do, outwork do an extra me. Rep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no way. Yeah. And, you know. Back to the, what I, I just want to ask. I, I understand the environment, and I agree. I think we all agree with that. The environment is the most important thing for your kid. So what should these other schools, let's use Schuylkill Valley or Hamburg, what should they do, and what should those parents do? Because I'm, I'm sorry. Hold, hold, let, me, let, me, okay. let me finish. Okay. Because I'm sure you're not telling every one of the good kids at Schuylkill Valley or Hamburg to leave. No, not at you're all. You're not saying that. No. Because, right. We're because, not saying that at all. What right. We're saying so I'm is, saying it. So what should that school be doing? And how do they? I, I think. I you understand think what I'm saying? Because you don't yeah, yeah. want. Because you still need other teams so, to play against. So right. what, what I would say is that I, I think it's a little bit. It's a little bit of both. And I, and I, I can use this argument because I'm, I'm making a speech for this, for a throwing clinic that I'm doing next week where I got to present and, and try and convince throws coaches to stop being turds. Right. And to, to change their own culture because throwing right. is like the fat kid sport, the lazy right, right, kid right, sport. Right. So I would say, one, you know, going back to the political side, if you're conservative, you believe in the trickle-down effect. So that means top-down. And if two, it, typically if you're a little more liberal, you believe in education and learning and, right, and right. progressing yourself individually. So what that means to me is that the guy who's the head coach for football and the athletic directors, they're the ones who are responsible, one, for improving their knowledge and improving the game and improving the, the, environment. the, the environment and the studies. Dude, I have, I have days that Trevor and I and DJ will discuss what it's like to train Nicholas versus what it's like to train a kid who's an only child because we want to understand – we want to be empathetic and right. understand why is that only child? Why is he a pussy? Well, he's he's been a baby. He's been babied right. his whole entire life. 
So he's so we need to relate to him. Right. And that's the thing with these athletic directors and the head coaches. It's their it's their issue. They need to understand. Okay, we got to bring in somebody who is passionate about changing the culture. We got to understand every single kid we get. Because there's ten kids and ten kids get instructed differently, right? You know, and right. and, it, and it all starts from the top in either educating yourself, or just showing it and, and saying like, "Yo, I'm gonna show up. I'm the head coach. I'm showing up five days a week." Or you know, that's a be- the best part about uh, BC is that Espo's there all the time, screaming his face off. So yep. so they know that there's someone invested, and that's from the top. And they and they'll sit there and say. You know, Espo's like, dude, I don't know as much about about lifting, so I, you know, Dane comes in, right. and, and then now he changes that culture as well. And I think that's the whole the whole thing where these people who just blame everybody else, that's what they're missing is that they're not looking at themselves. No, they they don't look at themselves. If if I'm having a problem with my wife, I sit there and she and, and I and I and at first I'll be defensive and I'll blame her. Right. But then but I'll take ultimately, a, yeah, I take a step yourself. back and I'm like, you know what? She's right. At, yeah. at least to an extent, I've got to change who I am. And that's where they're failing miserably is that they can't look themselves in the mirror. And I think that ultimately has to do with top down in our country where yeah. it's, we go on Twitter and, and blame yeah. everybody else for our bullshit problems. Right. Instead of sitting there and be like, you know what, how can we change this? How can we run more effectively? And to use your, you know, your best quote from Obama and Martin <laughs> Luther King is like, is, is embracing right now. And yeah. if, if I'm a leader in those schools, I'm changing the culture tomorrow, like right. like today, right now. Yeah, I'm not, fucking right. changing everything. I'm we're getting in the weight room. We're bringing the best people in. We're gonna we're gonna bring up the intensity, and we're gonna we're gonna take somebody who's a scrub. And the thing is, you take one scrub and you turn him into an animal. Everybody, everybody. everybody's everybody. on board. And just to piggyback off of both of what you're saying is, those guys at the top, and. Neil and I have been in the system for a pretty decent time now, is that we've coached a game on a Saturday, and then the following Friday we're coaching a game on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as this. As an AD or as anybody of power in that organization, the real simple quick look is look in the mirror. If my fifth grade team is running a completely different offense – than my high school team. Well, some can't, though. No, no. What I'm saying is you can't run a full-on... We may disagree with that a little bit. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't think you need like to this. run with... I, I, I will <laughs> say like this. Hold on. I'll say like this. Brandon and CJ in sixth grade could have walked up to BC and they could have said, all right, guys, get in 121 formation. They would have known where the wing goes, where the fullback goes, where the wide receiver goes. Now... Could they run the complex play that the high school runs? No. But they're learning the basics. But they know 121, 929. I don't think – I'd rather have a kid that knows, like you said, get down three-point stance, <laughs> knows his holes. If you can teach those kids that. Because I because I don't care if he goes to BC, Mifflin, Wyoming. I want that kid to be a football player. And that's why I don't think no, I agree. kid's needing to know – the system. No, no, what I'm saying is not sure. knowing the system because you're a sixth grader is never going to know what a 12th grader knows. What I'm saying is but I don't a even, quick check, just a quick check. He said it helps. It helps. If you're at a school, but I don't think you're at a school that doesn't but, have but, super stellar athletes. Yes, but but, but, the system, system but they may place, be running a system that you definitely can't run for fifth grade. You're not running a spread. But what I'm saying is you can't go from some eighth grade running no, but you sh- but should you? But you but you can't do it. Right, but what I'm saying though, but Neil, but Shama, you can. If my kids can block, tackle, and run, and know their holes, I can do any system I want. They don't have to know how to run. or They don't have to know that system. Wouldn't you agree? I don't. When I say system, I'm just saying the base. You should know. If you come from seventh grade to the pony team, you should know how to line up in our base formation. You should know that. I shouldn't be wasting can, my I, first I can, week of practice. I can practice. agree with you, but I, I try to you teach that. Trying to teach yeah. that. That's I, all I'm I, saying. I, Just in, I'm not saying simple. I'm not saying you can't because listen, listen. Again, if a Neil kid, is if, the, if the first person running to take our, the, our offense and manipulate in a completely different way than what we might do it, but he didn't manipulate our formations, our calls, and our – you know what we're supposed to do stay within the system he stayed within the system you can run what you're saying because right. everybody's offense 
has a spread. Yeah. Everybody's like offense has a triple yeah. this, that, and a third. But if you're not using it in the context that it's used at the next level, and what I mean, Tim, is that well, who's just that start on the, there. Is that on the head coach or is that on the AD or, or what? Because that's that was sort of where I wanted to go next. It's like, all right, if where, you're building a program, where are we uh, it's at? I think what uh, both of these guys, too many guys on Friday nights, too many coaches try to do what guys are doing on Saturday and Sundays, yeah. and you can't do it. They try to get too complex. They don't have the athletes. You know, some places they do, some, some places, places they, they don't. don't. Yep. Like you said, Mish, you know, grew up with him, one of my best friends. When he was coaching at Schuylkill Valley, when his kid played there, people seemed to forget it wasn't too long ago that they were good. where they lost to Wyoming missing by a point in a district game when Wyoming missing went on to win the state title. They, in my mind, that, that regular yeah. season, they actually beat Wyoming, but they got a hose, they got hose on one call when Angelo only scored a TD. They had fucking, they had Wyoming beats. Yep. So, that was four or five yeah. years ago. Yeah. So, so, what, what, hap- like so what happened at ago. Schuylkill Valley? What happened at Schuylkill Valley? I, th- I think Mish was was he was part he of the, part of the thing. What happened? He left. Mish and, was and there. There was no, but there's no youth Look. development. There was no, and, and it was all. And, and think about Mish. Mish is going to tell you the truth. Not enough people tell the kids the truth. If you're doing something bad, if you stink, Mish is going to tell you at the time. You stink. Let's change this. Yeah. If put this way, if if your kid brings home a C on his report card, you know what you're going to say? Hey, man, we'll get it up. Good job. We'll be all right. If a coach tells you, hey, I think your son is just an average football player. How dare you call my son average? There, there's a different standard. You know, so you're saying Mish at Schuylkill Valley, they, and Mish, they stopped at the telling. Time, Mish had them kids believe it. They were all physical. I watched them play Reading High, and they're the ninth grade team. They told, they're running a spread. They beat Reading High 46. I couldn't believe it. I was like, where did this come from? But the co- the attitude of the coach, and he treated them all the same. You know, he, he didn't have like a stud guy that he babied or coddled. This is the he same coach. Just, you hear, you is this the same something? coach that was there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to hear something? When when Mish was there, they dude, we we probably had fucking fifteen kids from School yep. Valley training right every here. Let me day, five days a week. The group that, how many kids the we have from School that, Valley? Zero. So Mish coached those kids from youth? No, from like seventh grade, eighth grade. Okay, so he had them. Yeah. He had them in pony. Seventh, eighth, ninth. But Going what back he to did, your pony yeah. But what he did say to me, he said, "Look, Mish, but even Mish was, was at still, Reading. He was, was at Reading. He was killing guys. When he was still coaching two years ago, he was like, dude, 'Dude, I'm telling these kids to come there. I'm telling them to come over to the gym, and they just they won't. They don't, they do don't want to do it. Right? They don't want to come over. So now we have zero kids from that school. And then what happens is they want to sit there and they say, dude, Schuylkill Valley is almost the exact same size as BC. Almost the exact same size." They're crying the blues that someone like Brandon's smashing their kids, but what ends up happening is Brandon's smashing their kids because they're not physically developed, and Brandon is. They're not hanging with, you know, someone like Anthony or, or CJ or, or Abdul, you know, Luke Payton. But they're really Shane. good at Fortnite. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole difference is that those yeah, kids Fortnite. those kids are busy playing Fortnite until all hours, and this whereas, is, whereas our, our guys are, are lifting five and, days a week. And, and again, this would be... The AD and head coach and the parents. Yeah, but because the AD and the head coach, like, like I, I they can only do here, so much. I can sit here and I can say to Brandon, during basketball, I you need to lift hard two days a week, and I can communicate that to Brandon, and he's going to get it done. I can sit down with you two and be like, this is my expectation from you guys as parents. This is my expectation from your kids as athletes, and this is what you should expect from me. That's all they need to do. And they need to do it fucking regularly. They need to sit there and be like, look, I'm the head football coach. I expect you guys in the weight room four to five days a week. And even if you play another sport, it's going to benefit for another sport. Right. Brandon doesn't give a rat's ass about throwing. And he's one of the best shot putters and one of the best discus throwers in the state because he's training. Yep. So he that's goes the out there point. before. Yeah. He barely even trains for, for throwing. And he is obviously he's a gifted athlete. But at the right. end of the day, right. he's a gifted athlete because he put work in for six years. So these people who cry... They can't sit there and relate because he's been busting his ass since he was in sixth grade. He's trained right. more in the last six years than these guys will train in their entire existence. So they can't even relate to that work ethic. And it goes back to these are the same ADs that are lazy as fuck. They're coaches, not all of them. Right. I, I think a guy at SV is, is intelligent and he knows his stuff from X's and O's, but he can't get them to work. And working is the most important Most aspect. important thing. Yeah, right. They're they're too busy making excuses, right. blah blah blah, and then preventing you know the guy at Hamburg. Now he's preventing you know, in the past, 
prevents a kid from transferring to BC, makes him sit out a year, you know, holds a 16 year old kid hostage, and then what ends up happening? Then his best friend's kid transfers to Wilson, and it's okay. And it's like, dude, there's it's, just double standards. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For no reason. I uh, got a time limit, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, this will be part well, one. Just on that two. note. Yeah. On that note. I told you that, didn't I? Say that? Yo, <laughs> my son. But look, before we go. What, what? <laughs> we need you on the podcast more often. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, good what, 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 yeah. what bringing my son to Dane did is no matter where he would have went, he would have went to Wilson, he would have went to... Dane prepared him, like you said, to play anywhere. for life, to play yeah. anywhere, to do anything. Like The hour he puts in four times a week here when he's here is tougher than any game. Yeah. Games, it's like taking a bat to a pillow fight. The guy with the bat always wins. Yeah. You know, he's the pillow fight champion. But that's the whole thing, dude. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so pretty much, and I think everybody here would agree, if we all agree, football's strength and speed. Yeah. Pr- pretty much. That, that's well, technical. all. Technical. It's a little bit technical, but yeah. at, at the high school level, it's pretty yeah, strength yeah. and speed. But strength Let me look this out. back. So, you, so if you would lift, <laughs> if your whole team lifted year-round, you're, you're gonna, more likely going to be a, a lot better yeah. than if your kids don't. And even if you do lose, you're going to lose by 10, 15, <laughs> yeah, not yeah. by 50. Yeah, and, not by 50. Right. And, and, and like he said something, and I just want to say this real quick. He said that Brandon worked hard. Now, don't get me wrong. Brandon had some God-given – yeah, a base, yeah, yeah, to work yeah, from. Yeah. But what I would tell everybody is, I have no dreams of turning on Saturday football and watching my son on NBC. But what I do know is, is that he's gonna have to get a job. Right, <laughs> right. So he's gonna have eventually. To, everybody's to gonna have to get a job. job. Right. Yeah. I remember. Have to compete, I remember yeah. the first the time ever in the barn, because I do get to say I was at the barn. Yeah. Was CJ came out of there, tears welled up, looked in his eyes, and I said, are you all right? He goes, yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. stuff. And yeah. I said, okay. And, I, you know, as a parent, I see my son is hurting, and I'm like, not hurting, but worn out. Yeah, yeah. And, and I said, well. Distressed. Yes, yeah. distressed. I said, do you want to <laughs> stop or do you want to continue? Yeah. And his response to me was, I want to play on Friday night as soon as I can. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's and, about and the it's... fact that you just working, just knowing that it takes this, this, this to get to this. Right. There's no, right. you yeah. can't skip there's from no A to pill, Z. There's right. no, you have to there's... touch every letter in the yeah. alphabet yeah. to get to Z. Mm-hmm. And until your kid knows that, and until ADs, until coaches, dude, that's that that's that's, that's so. Um, Drago tweeted, "This is like week nine, a picture of Nicholas, and was like, this kid's a freak." And that pissed me off because the, here's the thing: Nicholas and Brandon could have done nothing, and they would have been good football right. players, right? They right. would have been good, yeah, right. but they weren't. They're not. They're not like. But, uh, even Barkley, yeah. like, dude, he's a freak, but he's he cleaned 410 yeah. pounds. So, like, here's the thing I, that uh, pissed me off about it is that Nicholas has been coming since sixth grade. This kid puts in more time and more effort and deals with me hounding him, deals That's, with DJ yeah. on his back, and these guys will make it seem so easy. He's a freak. It's an excuse. It's an excuse, you know. Yeah. And that's my problem is that it's like, no, dude, you have no clue what that kid did for the last three years to prepare we, to rush for over a thousand about, yards as a freshman. We talked about when he first got here on Sundays, how many kids from that last four years or five years of Burst Catholic, how many of those kids were here yeah. on Sunday mornings? Eight, nine like of them. Eight, nine o'clock in the morning. After winning 56 to nothing, yeah. Yeah. 75 after, to whatever. After, after yeah. losing to the semifinal yeah. game. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Sunday, they're here. That get, the that next gets year. lost, and people don't like. I always yeah, tell because we talked about that with, a lot with Cooper too. Yeah, like, you don't Cooper realize. Would be in here be Sunday in there, morning yeah. at eight, then Brandon rolls in at ten because it's an hour drive. Right, right. That's what you do. Right. That's what you do. But, but I, even again for another kid, everybody people don't realize how much work Lonnie put in. Yeah. Lonnie Walker put his in. His dad didn't have be, him running around here. Right. You know he he people the kids and parents don't realize how much work these kids put in. Right. And they think it is that easy. 
you know, again, some kids genetically have, right. but it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, what, what I what I tell people to describe when they say, "Why you want to go to garage?" You know, you go. To, I say, "All right, you ever go to Hershey Park on a July day and you get there about three o'clock in the afternoon, and the line to get on the roller coaster it says you got a three hour wait from here." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can go get that pass where you get that little piece of paper where you just jump right to the front line, mm. get on, go past again. It costs you a little bit of money, but you ain't got to wait. That's what having a good work ethic, having that's a good really trainer. Good you know, <laughs> that's what it does. It gives you the, I, it, it gives you the quickie pass to Friday night yeah. or to, to the varsity baseball team or whatever you do, right. basketball. You know, like how many that times, is a good point. You know, we don't lose 50-50 balls. <laughs> You know, yeah, in right. basketball, because a lot of our basketball guys are do We're come trained, here, yeah. and we ain't losing 50, like 50 that, balls. Like that put back, whatever those oh, things yeah. are called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we listen. We never, we never lose anything that has to do with strength, right? Ever. I've never said we've gone out and got physically dominated ever. And back to what so, where was, would you be at without Dane? No, well, not, I mean, not just... Rise. Somebody like Neil will, will find... No, 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 no. Like, I'm talking about the school. Oh, I don't know about that. The but school I, itself? I think, like, he would have found some, like... He, like no, I understand no, individually. individually yes. I'm sorry. Indi- no, as a school... But, but no, you don't realize, there ain't many... Yo, Dade... Yo, put the, he, Brandon, he's going to Pitt. He got his workout. The workout he got from Pitt is, is pretty basic. Brandon said that he looked at it. <laughs> it's okay. He's like, he said to him, he said, hey, if I if I go by this workout, this is gonna set me back. <laughs> because there ain't and and there ain't many kids going to coming from high school to college, even your your five star athletes that you know, you got your DeAndre Swift. His dad was a trainer. He knew how to do all yeah. that stuff. Look how right. good he was. But that explosive exercise, you can't just practice that in your garage. Right. You gotta have somebody. I think some people think Are you gonna answer? I don't know where they know I don't know do. where we'd be. I'm pretty right. sure he wouldn't be where we're at now. That's all right. I'm That's say. all. Yeah. Agreed. Right. Uh, I guarantee he wouldn't be where he's at right. Because again, those Sunday mornings seeing eight, nine, ten kids in here, to me was amazing. That when I first got here to yeah. see all those kids here, and then we talked about this too. For any. That's why you try to get as many Mifflin kids out of yeah, here, yeah. right? Because you have to come. Well, now we got Cocalico kids yes, coming come in, in and, and yeah, and you have to yeah, like, come in and. And even though it is like the opponents, it also does create like where everybody's training. Like, and think about the people. What these other idiot ads and coaches don't realize, if there's only one good team in the area, nobody's coming to see you. No. Nope. Nope. What if? Mifflin's good and Wilson's good. You create a one-stop shopping for college recruiters. Hey, I can go see yeah. any of these games, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna like we're Harrisburg area. Yeah. Like we talk about all the we're time. About There's Central athletes. Them guys compete. Yo, who's yeah. gonna go see Hamburg and Burst Catholic or or, <laughs> or Fleetwood and Kutztown? You know right, what I mean? Right. But kids are all this. I told my Hamburg people when I was there in fourth grade. I said, if you take, because when we when I had the Hamburg Mighty Mice never lost a game, and we played. Van Reed, Lincoln Park, Cole Calico. I said, if you take 20 Wilson kids at this age and 20 Hamburg kids, scatter them all around, put red and white shorts on, have them face the wall. If you don't know them kids, you can't pick the Wilson that's kids. That's the that's the problem. Yeah. Is that like from the think about from the Hamburg kids? And like they're they got all big the kids. same kids. Yeah, like, they're, they're, big they're kids. not genetically more talented at Mifflin. You will not you will not convince me that. Some random ass kid from Mifflin is more genetically gifted than the kid from a Mifflin. random kid. That's but the difference is, is the environment. The random kid. It's, That's what he's saying. The random oh, kid, but not the best. But kid. the randoms make more of the and it's the stars. Envi- it's the environment that they they get brought up. Well, in. the more kids you have, the more kids you have in your in your school district, the better off you, you yeah, should. You're going to find still more no athletes. There's no reason for a school like Kutztown or Fleetwood to be as bad. Kutztown's as, 4A. Like, no, yeah, they should. There's really zero should. reason, dude. Zero, and it's it goes that way with track. I, I, you can see these kids throwing it like these kids. No, the never other hard. The other, the, they don't know what work. The other is. thing that's difficult. It's very hard. I know we got to go. It's very hard for. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll take Super Bowl predictions after. This. Yeah, it's yes. very hard for <laughs> you most schools. It's your fault. It's very I it hard. To be documented it's that I very, said the least. It's very hard for most schools to be very good at a bunch of multiple sports because you don't have enough kids. Wait, Unless, you're Unless you're BC. Unless you're BC or what? 
when you recruit. No. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a, I don't quite say that. Yeah, you know I mean, no, it. it I, I, I get what you're saying. Here's, the, here's the thing, too, too go, go with that the environment. You take, you know, there's a girl who's get, who's going to Maryland on yeah. field hockey. Yeah. You know, last year there was a swimmer going to uh, uh, to Penn State to swim. Kevin Merritt played, yeah. played JMU. Yeah, yeah. So at JMU. And, and that's the thing. You got to sit there. And, and Mifflin's got that same, that same well, you, environment. I think what we talked about today, it, it starts in youth. And I bet you nine times out of ten, if you have a good dad who has a good group of kids, and he takes those kids, those group of kids, and works them and works them all the way up to middle school. Mm-hmm. And they're still good. They're probably still going to be good when they get to high school. Yeah. I yeah. think it starts in youth. Like you I, you said that. I, and, and not, I don't care what you run, but just teach those kids. The developmental, the developmental has to be there. Because then they understand. Like, then they okay, understand. for me to get that next step. I got to go. go. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, keep and then, progress. so that's where it starts. Because it is almost impossible if you get a group of kids that can't get down three-point stance by eighth grade or seventh grade. You're in for and, you're and gonna have problems. And you, wait, that, you waste time. You Mish, waste you waste back time. To, back to Mish. He said when he was coaching at Schuylkill Valley, he called Barry, Barry Alvarez when he was coaching at Wisconsin. He said we sent him an email. He said, How comes every year, no matter what, you have multiple thousand yard rushers? Your running game is and Barry sent him a, a DVD and a, and an email. He said, we treat every practice like it's a youth practice. He said, you can't run for 1,000 yards if you have a false step, if you take right. a handoff improperly, if you don't do everything right. Mm-hmm. He said, so we treat our practice, the beginning of practice, like a youth practice. We practice handoffs. We practice you know, carrying the ball properly, practice not taking false steps. And that's the point where, where like I said, some coaches forget that it's, it's the little things that make you great. Dude, and that's where uh, this will be a good segue back to the Super Bowl predictions. Is that when I went up to <laughs> two I've hours been, later? Yeah, I, I've been to uh, New England's training camps. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's why you With like Espo. him. The, that's why you like. No, him. Espo wasn't there, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> they have matching tank tops. <laughs> when the the way Belichick runs his camp. There is practice. It was like seven minute intervals, and everybody's moving. And one thing he said is he was yelling at. This is when uh, Takeo Spikes was playing for them. So this is like 07 or 08. Um, he's a linebacker, monster. Oh yeah. And he was like dropping back into coverage, but they were only running. It was like linebackers and D backs, and he was in the wrong spot. And he was flipping out. He's like, Takeo, do your fucking job. You only do your job. And that's the whole thing, though. Is it right. comes back to. If Takeo Spikes does his job, job it makes he he's fine. And then if yeah. you know Vince Wolfrick at the yeah. time does his job, yeah. and then yeah. and then Brady does his job. If every single person, if you does can teach job. him, and that's that was his fundamental lesson from that day. He's teaching the what a best you know three time Pro Bowl linebacker to do his freaking damn job. job. And that's that's where it it comes back to you know for these coaches, for the athletic director, for the players, do your job, get better. You need to constantly get better, get better, get better. That's your job, and that's. That's your role in society. If we're gonna be progressive as a country, like even you know, I know this is that's a little right, 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 but right. you've got to fucking do oh, your job. That's for all, another all. podcast. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> all right, Super Bowl predictions. Tim, you go. I, maybe I should go first. I'm gonna. I can go first. You want to score? Uh, maybe a, a brief description of. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know. He doesn't give anything brief. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the Eagles and the six. Rams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. They're not playing. That's right. That's right. Browns minus no. two. <laughs> and I think the Rams win. You're and, stupid. And see, I can't even. So <laughs> Espo, Espo just texted him that. Yeah. <laughs> the Rams by thirty-five to thirty-one. Mine will be a little bit more educated <laughs> than just shouting out a number. I coach defense. <laughs> And if anything worries Tom Brady, it's pressure. It's pressure right up the middle. Yep. Yeah, McDonald's a beast. With yeah. Donaldson and Sue yeah. just pushing right up the middle. That that can affect him. Now I'm not saying he won't be Tom Brady, but if I wanted to go against Tom Brady, knowing his one Weakness. thing that really irritates him is not being able to stand still and having to move to the right or left, I would bet on the Rams being able to create that pressure. And 
they have some corners that can play on that team. And I think, honestly, it's going to come down to defense versus defense, not so much offense versus offense. So what's the score? Uh, it's a Super Bowl. Super Bowls are always in the 30s. So I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say, 35, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say forty to thirty-five. Rams. All right, good job. You just said they were always in the thirties. Right. Yeah, thank you. You're in the forties now. <laughs> but the average is under. 40. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, educated. I think, I think the Rams by ten. I think their running game is pretty tough, and their defense is. Solid. I think you're all done. <laughs> <laughs> you drop, you and, and even, Hold even on, we're like, gonna have Espo via satellite. He just throws his pen down. Just I should have invited you guys in the first place. <laughs> Michelle, Burkhead, and White are all gonna total over 200 yards rushing. Sue and the Beast D tackle has got what 20 and a half sacks. Yeah, doesn't matter. They're gonna neutralize him with the running game. New England. 38-17 in a blowout. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Does Espo have, have a prediction? She would text him and found Espo's prediction is Brady wins. That's is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. yeah. <laughs> Brady wins. What's the score of Brady wins? <laughs> TV 12. Yes. I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? To, you know. When I don't have a, a horse in a race, I always wish for a, a good game. Maybe Dana have a Super Bowl party. <laughs> like, <laughs> you said, nah. Dane, no. Dane should have a no. live Super Bowl podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, did you watch out the, Is the um, podcast over there? Yeah. Well, did you call. see it? Go ahead. Oh, no, End it. Finish it up. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Let me into my zone, please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, let me let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, please don't let me in. Please don't let me into my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation, you can conversate to that tone. Uh, my God, up on that throne. Uh, yeah. Let me into my zone, please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, please don't let me in. Please don't let me into my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation, you can conversate to that tone. Uh, my God, up on that throne. Yeah, so I'm never alone. Yeah, all these people trying to boss me in. I'm Mayweather, it's on. Yeah, now they ask where I'm at, making his that long back. I'm MJ, I'm two three man. I just need some time back. I'm zoned in like defense. My life gone, no recess, but I live my best one, so I got no regrets. So go, I'm gone, finally back in my home. I'm working like so much, they swear I had me a clown. Can't answer my phone now, just leave it there, that tone. Ballin' can't beat me up, cause I'm back in my zone now.